Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. New at noon, a 50-year-old man now facing intoxication manslaughter charges after a crash that left another person dead on the northeast side. The Bear County Medical Examiner still has not identified that victim. However, we do know that Sergio Vasquez was arrested and charged with intoxication manslaughter. The crash happened on Sunday evening in the 13,600 block of Nacogdoches Road. That's between Higgins Road and O'Connor Road. Police say Vasquez was driving a van when the victim was crossing the street using a crosswalk. Officers say Vasquez hit the man, throwing him across the intersection. That victim was pronounced dead at a nearby hospital. Also new at noon, more details about a man killed during a different crash on the northeast side this weekend. The Barrow County Medical Examiner identifying the man as 73-year-old Gordon Travis Hill Jr. Police say Hill was driving on Loop 1604 near Green Mountain on Saturday. At some point, he lost control of his truck and crashed into one of those concrete pillars. First responders had to help pull him out of the truck because he was trapped inside. He was pronounced dead at the scene. It's not clear why Lo Hill lost control of his vehicle. Metro Health reporting 888 new COVID-19 cases here in Bear County. The seven day moving average now up to 774. And Metro Health is reporting a backlog of 758 cases. The total confirmed cases now 80,057. 22 deaths were reported this week with 13 of those being backlogged. The death toll is now 1,357. Meanwhile, in our hospitals, doctors are treating 582 people. That's up 34 since Saturday. 178 patients are in the ICU and 96 patients are on ventilators. And with a rise in cases comes a push for more testing, even for people who aren't showing any symptoms. Three large scale local sites are open and free to the public for testing. And as Max Massey shows us, the strategy is called test to suppress. We are here in lot two of the AT&T Center where already thousands of San Antonians have had free, fast and efficient COVID-19 testing. We spoke to some people online this morning who said it's better to be safe than sorry. I was instantly booked a, an appointment. I walked through. I basically didn't wait at all. I, I walked up and was able to, to take a test. No charge, no ask for insurance or anything. It was great. The week leading up to Thanksgiving, there were 5,700 people tested. Important to mention though, this community testing is just for people without symptoms. People without symptoms are welcome here at the AT&T Center, Monday through Friday, nine to four, and at Cuellar and Ramirez Community Centers, Monday through Friday, eight to six. This is the test to suppress method, stopping the virus from spreading. If we can identify those folks by testing through community labs and other resources like it, we will be able to identify those people who are positive for COVID-19, even though they're not showing symptoms, and we can then isolate them. They can self quarantine. And the hope is to test as many people as possible. Community labs capacity is to test about 6,000 samples a day. By December 1st, a little later this week, it will be 12,000 samples a day. An opportunity so many are already taking advantage of. Better to have that peace of mind to know. It's, it's inevitable. It's a global pandemic. Nobody's safe from it. We're all human. And so I, I would encourage everybody to, to come out and get tested just so that they know and they can plan accordingly. If you have any questions about locations or times for that free COVID testing, we have all that information right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Reporting at the AT&T Center, Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Meantime, if you're looking for a COVID-19 test on the south side, today's the last day you can get one for free at the University of the Incarnate Word. It's currently the only free testing site located on San Antonio's south side. Testing started at 8 in the morning. It ends at 5 in the evening. All you have to do is go to campus on Kennedy Hill Drive. Walk-up testing is available. However, organizers are asking as many people as possible to make an appointment. If you're already experiencing symptoms, UIW says you should... Just call your doctor and try and arrange a test that minimizes the risk of exposure to others. If you want to know more about scheduling an appointment, you can go to our website at ksad.com. Today, another coronavirus vaccine may be one step closer to distribution. Moderna asked the FDA for emergency youth authorization. As ABC's Andrea Fujii reports, this comes after a record number of people were hospitalized for the virus over the holiday weekend. 
Today, another vaccine breakthrough. Moderna says with a 94% efficacy rate, it is filing for emergency use authorization. It is the second company to offer a vaccine behind Pfizer that is also seeking emergency use authorization. And unlike Pfizer's vaccine that requires specialized freezer storage, Moderna's vaccine can be stored in regular freezers for six months and refrigerator for 30 days. This as a record number of people were hospitalized over the weekend for COVID-19 in the U.S., over 93,000 and more than 130,000 people testing positive Sunday. But the COVID tracking project warns those numbers may not reflect all the cases since the Thanksgiving holiday may delay some results. During the holiday travel period, the TSA screened more than 8 million people at U.S. airports and health experts are worried two or three weeks down the line, we may see a surge upon a surge. Each case, every death, affecting so many families. With rising case numbers across the country, tighter restrictions being put in place in some areas. L.A. County reporting more than 5,000 cases yesterday, and starting there today, they'll begin a three-week stay-at-home order. Still have to, um, you know, go out and get the things we need, but... Uh, stay at home as much as we can. But some good news for New York City parents. Mayor Bill de Blasio announcing most elementary schools will reopen next week after being closed for nearly two weeks. And testing will be required every week in order for kids to return. As for Pfizer's vaccine, while doctors can't administer it yet, sources tell ABC News that United Airlines has started shipping it through charter flights to get the vaccine in place for distribution for when Pfizer does get that emergency use approval from the FDA. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. New details as soon after a man shot on the city's north side overnight. Police tell us that he was hit by a bullet as he was trying to climb into his apartment. Police were called to the 4600 block of Vance Jackson around 1130 last night. When they got there, they heard screams coming from an apartment. And inside the home, police found a 31-year-old man on the floor with a gunshot wound to his arm. A witness told the officer that the victim was walking with three other people outside when they got into an argument. And that's when the victim ran to the neighbor's apartment. From there, he started climbing up to his apartment on the next floor. Meanwhile, police say the suspects were shooting at him. He was hit once. He should be OK. No one else was hurt. Police are still looking for the other people involved. And on the south side, an argument ends with one person getting stabbed, another man's property being lit on fire. Police say the victim was at his mother's home when he got into an argument with the suspect. Officers say the suspect arrived at the home last night and was told to leave by both the mother and the victim. When he didn't, an argument broke out between the suspect and the victim. And that's when police say the suspect stabbed the victim before taking off. The victim then grabbed some of the suspect's belongings, which had been left behind, and lit them on fire in a nearby parking lot. So far, no one is facing any charges. Don't come this half hour. The Cowboys still have an outside shot at the postseason. An explanation coming up. A man who dedicated the past 28 years to delivering mail in one South San Antonio neighborhood is getting ready for some much deserved rest. Sarah Coast explains why he's more than just the mailman to some neighbors. And we'll have an update on the potential for some freezing temperatures by tomorrow morning. That's coming up. We are starting to get a clearer picture of what President-elect Joe Biden's White House will look like, announcing key staff positions, including an all-women communications team over the weekend and the leaders of his economic team today. Meanwhile, President Donald Trump's string of defeats in his battle to overturn the results of the election isn't slowing his claims that the election was stolen from him. ABC's Andrew Dimbert reports from Washington, D.C. President-elect Joe Biden is building his White House, already nominating the first woman, Avril Haines, to lead the nation's intelligence community. And if confirmed, his pick for Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, would be the first woman to head the department in its over 230-year history. The president-elect's senior communications staff, also in all-woman lineup, with former Obama administration official Jen Psaki set to take over as press secretary. And as Biden steps closer to the Oval Office, a minor misstep has him in a walking boot for a few weeks after he slipped while playing with his dog. President Donald Trump tweeting this get well wish, but messages of positivity for his eventual successor stop there. Trump continues to unleash a torrent of false claims that the election was stolen from him. This election was rigged. This election was a total fraud. 
and it continues to be as they hide. And the problem we have, we go to judges and uh, people don't want to get involved. For Trump, the losses are mounting from courthouses to state houses. Lawmakers and judges from both parties have rejected most all of Trump's erroneous claims. The partial recount in Wisconsin not faring any better for Trump's whimsical hopes of overturning the will of the voters. Joe Biden actually gained votes in the process paid for by the Trump campaign. Now Trump's former head of cybersecurity, who he fired, joins the chorus of criticism on the president's refusal to accept the reality that he lost fair and square. There was no indication or evidence that there was any sort of hacking or compromise of election uh, systems on, before, or after November 3rd. We did a good job. We did it right. And the Trump campaign just lost another court battle, this time in Pennsylvania, when it comes to mail-in ballots. So that's more than 30 losses to date. Still, in public, President Trump is still pleading with judges and legislatures to somehow hand him this election. But for now, the decisions voters made earlier this month still stands. And Joe Biden is on track to be confirmed by the Electoral College next month. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. We've been I, waiting. We hit, we hit, we hit it. We, we hit winter. We got winter, and I didn't need a weather computer to tell me, Justin. My <laughs> knee is screaming. Yeah, uh, it's hurting, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, my that, busted knee told me all about it this morning. <laughs> that cold wind making the joints hurt. Uh, it was chilly this morning, and we had a great weekend. And since that, we got some much-needed rain here across the, uh, the area. Aquifer did jump up over the weekend. It's down today, though, two-tenths of a foot to 661.5. And your pollen counts just molds into moderate category at 850. We've got some more chilly temperatures on the way and a possible freeze tomorrow morning. The latest coming up. Marcus Perez has been with the United States Postal Service for 30 years, and today he delivered his final letters as he heads off into retirement. For 28 of those years, he's delivered mail to the residents in the Collins Garden neighborhood. Sarah Costa talked to residents about why they wanted him to know how much he'll be missed. He's more than a mailman. He's become a daily sign of hope for this West Side neighborhood, delivering their mail with a positive attitude for 28 years. Marcos Perez has worked this West Side neighborhood, getting to know almost all of the residents from the 650 homes that he delivers to. The Air Force veteran says he never requested to change routes because he fell in love with the people. So today, residents wanted to let him know how much they love and appreciate his many years of service with signs, letters, balloons, just letting him know that he will be missed. Marcos is just one mailman that touches everyone's heart. Like he knows everybody's name. He knows um, the grandkids, great grandkids. Um, if there's like an illness, like he when, he when he hears about it, he'll visit you at the hospital. He gives you words of encouragement. Coming up tonight here from Betis about why he loved being a postal worker, having to deliver in inclement weather, and even dealing with some not so friendly dogs. From the West Side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Sarah. She was wearing her nice maroon jacket. Jacket. See that? You saw what I have to put on yeah. today? What do you do that right now? I don't know. Go ahead. We'll wait. <laughs> just, just got time. Look at just this was no. That's not putting it on. I okay. I'll put it on. I lost okay. the bet. Congratulations to all my Aggie friends. Thank especially you, especially you, Justin. You know what? You don't even have to put it on. I have to say that the Aggies. Didn't play that great. I mean, it was. It and was which just goes game. to show how poorly LSU played. It was not pretty, but yes, we finally beat LSU. You know, we've only had one other win, so this was this was good. All right, I, good. I will wear the jersey. Give thank, me a moment. You thank go you do for weather. Playing along. The yearly bet. The yearly yeah. bet. Yes, indeed. My turn to pay up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it'll change again next year. Uh, we had some cold temperatures this morning, 32 in Fredericksburg, 32 in Rock Springs, 41 in San Antonio this morning. It was chilly. It was also windy. You know, if the, the wind wasn't up last night, we probably would have got much colder here in town. So we started off with a pretty significant wind chill. Right now we're at 51. Northerly winds still at 12 miles per hour. Humidity is very low. We've had some thin high clouds come through the sky. No big deal, but uh, it's probably keeping our warming down just a little bit more. And at the airport right now, again, 51, 50 at Port SA, 51 Stinson, 
48 still at Bernie stage. We've climbed into the 50s around Kerrville. It was chilly there this morning and 54 right now in Del Rio. Those dew points. I got to tell you, these are some of the lowest numbers I've seen in a long time. Dew points nearly in the single digits here, if not the teens. That is as dry as air gets uh, here in South Texas. So a very dry air mass settling in now. And uh, the wind chill, as we mentioned, is still there. Feels like 51 in Kerrville, feels like 40 in Rock Springs. We may lose that a little bit as temperatures climb into the 50s, but that north wind, yeah, well, it was, it was biting this morning. And it'll die down tonight. I think we'll get uh, almost calm winds by tomorrow morning. That really will set the stage for some chilly numbers on your Tuesday morning. And then the wind will get breezy again tomorrow afternoon. Here's a look at the forecast low for tomorrow morning. We're thinking of 30 here in San Antonio, 30 in Holotus, some 20s in the hill country. Here around San Antonio, it's going to be a light freeze. I would go ahead and take in tender vegetation. Of course, the pets, you don't want to forget about those. Pipes, probably okay. But as you get up into the hill country, that may be something you need to consider with temperatures dropping down into the, the 20s by tomorrow morning. We're talking mid-20s potentially, Fredericksburg over to Kerrville. Even places like Del Rio expecting freezing temperatures. So we may likely see a freeze warning get put into effect this afternoon. Uh, just something you're going to want to watch tomorrow morning. Visible satellite picture shows some of those clouds really starting to thin out. We'll probably go sunny this afternoon. As we zoom out, western half of the country minus the Pacific Northwest, very quiet. That last storm system that brought us the cold air now moving into New England and uh, northeast, northeastern states. Behind it, some pretty good snow falling across parts of Indiana and Ohio, and then some good heavy rain for New York and Boston. Forecast for today, Texas up to about 56, 57 for a high. And then notice those numbers drop off very quickly tonight with those clear skies and lighter winds. Long range forecast calls for clear skies most of tomorrow. I think as we go late in the day, we may start to see a few clouds drifting in from the south and east. And then our front will sweep through very quickly Wednesday morning. There's just not enough time for moisture to get back up in here. So with that, uh, most of our rain chances are going to be well to our east. There could be a couple of showers across our eastern counties midday Wednesday. That's it. And then it clears again and we get some cooler temperatures yet again. Sort of a reinforcing shot of cool, cooler, drier air. 62 tomorrow. 64 Wednesday, we'll just call for some rain off to the east breezy. 57 Thursday, we may flirt with freezing temperatures again Friday morning up to 56. And it does rebound some this weekend, but it is a lot more like fall compared to what we had been seeing. And coming up here at 1230, we're also going to update some of those rainfall totals and let you know where we are for the year. Ursula, the maroon looks good on you. I noticed that as I was putting this on, <laughs> your weather forecast got happier and happier. Is that right? The, the smile on your face right? broadened quite yeah. a bit. What do you think? It was, it's good luck. It's a good look. It's good luck. I like right. it. Look at the back. Justin Horn. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Yep. Maroon is a good color for me. <laughs> One day a year. One day. Ooh. All right. Still to come, the NFL games impacting the Cowboys and Texans yesterday. Both those teams lost on the weekend, but all is not lost. And UTSA has a shot at a title. Coming up. Pro football coverage. Powered by Davis Law Firm. Even though no Dallas or Houston over the weekend, there was other Sunday action. How about the Giants and Bengals? Fourth quarter under a minute to play since he down two. Brandon Allen is back to pass. He got sacked and loses the ball. New York recovers. Giants win 19-17. So let's take a look at the very close NFC East standings. And believe it or not, the Cowboys still have a shot, although the Giants now lead the division. Four and seven is their record. Washington also four and seven. So you can see there's still a lot there and a lot left to play. The Ravens and Steelers moved from Thanksgiving night all the way to Tuesday because of the COVID-19 outbreak within the Ravens organization. 11 players, including Lamar Jackson and eight staff members have tested positive so far. Baltimore has not practiced since their team facility closed Tuesday morning. Their game is still scheduled for Tuesday night at 7 o'clock San Antonio time, but that means their next game with the Cowboys will be moved. So here is the matchup with the Cowboys. So since COVID is affecting that game, it's going to be moved to Monday, December 7th at 4 o'clock in the afternoon in M&T Bank Stadium. All right, on to the Colts hosting the Titans. Derrick Henry put on a show, 178 yards rushing, 27 carries, three touchdowns. Titans win 45-26. Now the Texans will face the Colts twice in their next three games. So here's a look at their upcoming schedule week 13 it's the Texans 
and the Colts in RG Stadium. At least they get that one at home. What a weekend for UTSA. A big win against North Texas in what could be their last game of the regular season. Sincere McCormick back as the top runner in the, na in the nation in total rushing yards this season by racking up a whopping 251 yards on the ground. Quarterback Frank Harris just as effective. 113 rushing yards. The two help post a program record 443 yards on the ground. After the game, Harris had a little fun talking about McCormick's impact. Honestly, I mean, he's not that good. I mean, I mean, it's just open all the time. No, nah, I'm just lame. But uh, it's a, it's a great. It was crazy. Uh, he break. I don't know how he always breaks the long ones. It's like he never gets the the, the five yard. It's always like the seventy yard. All right, here's how UTSA still has a chance. Conference USA will determine division champions based on conference winning percentage due to the teams playing different numbers of games. UTSA can still claim the West and play in the CUSA championship game but could lose out to UAB if UAB beats Rice on December 12th. There was some great high school volleyball action over the weekend. Five area teams still alive in the hunt for state titles. In the Class 6A ranks, Brandeis moving on to the fourth round with a dramatic rally to beat their district rivals, Madison, in four sets. This is the deepest playoff run the Broncos have had since 2017. I was like, oh my goodness, like we're going to round four. This is crazy. This is as far as I've gone in my four years of being at Brandeis, and I just couldn't be more excited to be a part of this team. All these people, all of our supporters, which thank you guys so much if you're watching this. Um, it just, it's, it's crazy, and I'm, I feel so blessed. And like previous years, the regional and state tournaments are not going to be held on consecutive days. The fourth round starts on Tuesday night with some great local Class 6A matchups. Brandeis will take on Harlan at Northside Sports Gym starting at 6 o'clock. Reagan will face O'Connor at Littleton Gym. That one also at 6. And in Class 5A, New Braunfels Canyon will take on Corpus Christi Flower Bluff in George West. That match starts at 7.30. Is there a time limit on this bet? When, how long you have to wear that jersey? Uh-huh. I don't think so. I think I'm done. Are you? Yeah. Okay. It can be hard to stay motivated during the holidays, but working may have benefits to your brain health. Coming up, a recent study shows women who work tend to have better memory later in life. Plus, it seems like millions of people turned to retail therapy over the weekend. Black Friday online shopping sales reached record highs. How much money consumers spent on Friday alone? Still ahead in Consumer News. It is Cyber Monday, and that means deals are flooding the Internet. But just because it's a one-day offer doesn't mean today's the best time of the year to buy, especially certain big-ticket items, which you might want to hold off for next year to make sure you're getting the best bang for your buck. Today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. A top Iranian security official accusing Israel of using electronic devices to remotely kill a scientist who founded the Islamic Republic's military nuclear program. ABC's James Longman has details. There is all kinds of mystery surrounding the apparent assassination of Iran's top nuclear scientist at the end of last week. Initially, a report suggested he had been gunned down in his car just outside of capital Tehran, and the Iranians blamed Israel for the attack. Israel not commenting uh, one way or another. But now a top Iranian official is saying electronic devices were used to kill uh, Mohsen Fakhrizadeh remotely. And so there's been, as you might expect, a huge uproar inside Iran. We've seen the physicists' funeral broadcast on television and lawmakers voting to reduce cooperation with uh, international nuclear watchdogs. And that goes to the heart of this whole situation because there's been some concern for some time that Iran's uh, nuclear enrichment activity has been growing in recent months, particularly after Donald Trump pulled out of the 2015 uh, Iran nuclear deal. And so now the world is watching, waiting to see what Iran will do uh, by way of response. This is a country that can ill afford war, but perhaps that was the strategy uh, to begin with by whoever assassinated Mohsen Fakhrizadeh. James Longman, ABC News in London. China says it's sanctioning leaders of U.S. government affiliated bodies who promote democracy around the world in response to practices that, quote, blatantly meddle in Hong Kong affairs. A foreign ministry spokesperson says the measures would cover the senior director for Asia, 
the regional director for the Asia Pacific and two of the National Democratic Institutes officials responsible for Hong Kong. China has long accused similar groups of encouraging protesters who built grassroots movements to push for greater direct democracy in Hong Kong. The European Union's latest surge of coronavirus cases is going down in some countries. The COVID-19 death rate still rising in Europe to 95 for every 1 million people. The director of the European Center for Disease Prevention and Control says occupancy of intensive care units was at 91 percent last week. That means some countries are at the limit. And turning now to an incredible rescue, the U.S. Coast Guard says it has saved a boater who has been missing since Friday. In a tweet Sunday, it says 62-year-old Stuart B. departed Port Canaveral, Florida in a 32-foot sea ray and didn't come back. The Coast Guard says it dispatched an air crew and found him 86 miles offshore. He was still alive and clinging to his capsized boat. The historic 2020 Atlantic hurricane season finally over. But it did break records all across the board. It started early on May 14th, more than two weeks before the season officially began. A record 12 named storms made landfall across seven states. There were 30 named storms total. So many, we ran out of letters in the alphabet to name them. For just the second time in recorded history, the National Hurricane Center used every name on the predetermined list. Six storms reaching major hurricane status, which is a tie for the second highest number of major hurricanes in a single season. And for the first time in recorded history, two major hurricanes forming in the month of November. So weird. 2020 keeps on being weird. Got to hand it to the people in Louisiana, though. They took it five times and just five kept coming back. Those Louisiana people are tough. They are. No doubt about it. That uh, it has been an incredible year. And by the way, there, there's another system out in the Atlantic. It's a subtropical storm, but it may get named. And back in 2005, where we had a sort of a similar season, we had some name storms in December and in winter. So, yes, technically the season is over with, but we'll see what happens. It has been a weird year for sure. Weather headlines. We're expecting a light freeze tomorrow morning, at least here in San Antonio. Temperatures will dip into the 20s, mid 20s in some cases up in the hill country by tomorrow morning. We'll get another front on Wednesday. It'd be nice if this would bring some rain with it, but I don't think that it will. And then some warmer temperatures this weekend coming up. Uh, as we look outside right now, 48 degrees, Bernie Sage, 52 in Comfort, 54 in New Braunfels, 51 down there in Stinson. It's still a chilly day. And uh, temperatures are only going to make it into the mid, uh, maybe upper 50s this afternoon. We've still got some breezy winds, too, although these numbers are down from where they were earlier. And I think winds will continue to calm as we go into this evening and tonight. Yesterday, it was, it was windy. It was breezy overnight, too. 55 by 2 o'clock, 57 by 4 o'clock today. We'll see that sunset around 535. So it dips down to 51 at 6 o'clock and then down into the 40s already by 8 p.m., and then potentially down to around 30 here in San Antonio by tomorrow morning. We're going to talk much more about those freezing temperatures and a look back at some of the rainfall we received over the weekend and how much. That's coming up in just a bit, guys. Boy, do we need it. Thank you, Justin. There are a lot of benefits when it comes to having a job, but a new study shows it's great for your cognitive health. Stephanie Cerna explains why working women may have better memory as they age. If you're trying to get motivated after a long holiday weekend, just know it's actually great for your brain. A recent study shows women who work tend to have better memory later in life. I think it's surprising because we know that things like education can boost our thinking as we age or cognitive activity can boost our thinking as we age. But this study shows that even beyond education level, Something about work is really good for women's brains. More than 6,000 women between the ages of 16 and 55 participated in the study. They were followed for an average of 12 years and had their memory tested every two. Results show after the age of 60, memory decline was 50% greater among women who did not work. Dr. Jessica Caldwell specializes in women's brain health at Cleveland Clinic. She did not take part in the study, but says her main takeaway is staying active and challenging yourself will benefit you as you get older. It doesn't matter if you take on that challenge when you're younger. So those women who worked when they were 16 and in their early 20s got just the same benefit as women who came back to work later. So it's not too late to get uh, an extra challenge cognitively. It's really helpful for aging. 
She says keeping your mind active may also help with preventing Alzheimer's disease. Women are at greater risk. They account for two-thirds of current cases. Stephanie Serna, Case at 12 News. Still coming up, the White House giving us a look at this year's Christmas decor. But how many people does it take to make it look more festive? The answer later on in the show. Another twist in the Utah desert, a mysterious monolith disappeared 10 days after it was discovered. And now we can know more about its origins. We have details after the break. Hello everyone, this is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. Airbnb and DoorDash reportedly eyeing higher than expected valuations for their upcoming IPOs. That according to the Wall Street Journal, Airbnb planning to aim for a range of 30 to $33 billion when they kick off their investor roadshow on Tuesday. And that's higher than the $30 billion valuation that they had expected. Meanwhile, DoorDash planning to target a range of 25 to $28 billion, which is also higher than expected. Meanwhile, Bitcoin making a huge comeback as the cryptocurrency rebounded over the weekend just a few days after it fell $3,000. Now it's trading at just over $18,000 this morning. Bitcoin's previous peak was $19,800 in December 2017. Despite the drop, Bitcoin has skyrocketed more than 150% this year alone. And who better to give holiday gifts to than your furry friends? A new poll shows that half Americans are putting their pets on their gift list, with many planning to spend on average $137 on their animals this year. The survey shows that on average dogs are expected to get more gifts than cats and that's your cheddar business and tech update i'm baker Pachado coming to you from cheddar studios in lower manhattan also in your consumer news black friday online sales had a new record this year consumers spent an estimated nine billion dollars on black friday Traffic in physical stores plummeted as retailers try to prevent crowds by cutting their hours and limiting doorbuster deals. The U.S. store visits dropped by 52 percent. Experts predict today, Cyber Monday, to be the biggest ever. Crews are working on what could be the largest launch pad in the world, and it's taking shape in Cape Canaveral. Amazon's Jeff Bezos is building the new complex 36 launch pad for his new Glenn rocket. The launch pad is closer to the beach than the Falcon Atlas or Space Shuttle. The two versions of the Glenn rocket are taller than the Space Shuttle and SpaceX Falcon 9. The rocket's job will be to launch big satellites. That's the largest launch pad in the world by far. And the neat thing about it is if you just go down to the beach, it's right there. The new Glenn rocket is going to be built in a nearby factory on Merritt Island. The first liftoff could be two years away. A mysterious monolith appeared and then disappeared in the middle of the Utah desert. And now we're learning who may have created the piece. Nobody knows when the monolith was actually put where it was found, but some say it looks like the work of late artist John McCracken. The artist's son says his father once told him he wanted to put his art in places for it to be found much later. And the gallery that represented the state says it looks like a bona fide piece of his. Utah officials found the metal beam in a remote canyon earlier this month. It's 10 to 12 feet tall and has three sides. It has to rank up there with probably the weirdest experience I've had out there in the desert flying around. Yeah, officials did not disclose this location, but some curious folks were able to make the trek to see the piece before it was too late and it vanished. And take a look at this, a brightly burning meteor tore across the sky in western Japan. It descended quickly through the Earth's atmosphere, but people were still able to catch a glimpse and even record it. One local newspaper reported that video of the meteor showed it shining as brightly as the full moon as it neared the Earth. Ooh, pretty, pretty impressive. And the full moon we had last night was pretty impressive. It's bright. It, it was, was very bright. Yeah, and you, you were telling me you were trying to put up some Christmas decorations yesterday. It was a little windy. Yeah. A, a lot windy. windy. A lot windy. Uh, yeah, windy conditions. Those winds are starting to die down. This is a time of year where we can see a huge range in temperatures. Take a look at this. Just one year ago, it was 85 on this day back in 2019. In 1976, it was 22. Got down to 22. Uh, so you can see the range there. We're somewhere in between today. So far, 51 the high. 
41 the low, but it gets much colder tonight. Looks like we're going to have a freeze warning put into effect for parts of South Texas uh, later tonight. We'll have more on that coming up. Windy blowing decorations all over the yard, chasing them down. And, uh, and that fix, not fix and that me. wind was ice cold. It was, it was like a knife it was yesterday. Cold. I saw some of the reindeer, some of the yard decorations <laughs> yeah. all over. It was, down the street. Yep. It was one of those days. Yeah. Uh, winds are going to calm tonight. It's not going to be windy. The problem we're going to have is that temperatures are going to plummet. We probably will see our first freeze here in San Antonio. It'll be a light freeze, but uh, we are expecting it tonight. Here's a look at the rainfall over the weekend. We're going to look back a little bit here because the rainfall was such a good sight to see. I know Saturday was sort of dreary and rainy, but I think we all sort of enjoyed it. 1.31 at the airport, 3.11 Floresville, 2.37 in Pleasanton. Zooming in a little bit closer, places like Lavernia, over three and a half inches. There were some big numbers out there and the aquifer responded too. So this was all good news. It was widespread. So for the month, we're at 1.47. We're going to end November with 1.47 inches. That's still below average, and we received much of that on the 28th. Uh, the rest of the month was generally dry, so it was tough. And as we look at the year, we're at 19.89, still 10 inches below the average. So we need some more rain in the forecast. Time lapse shows that the sunrise was beautiful. We had a couple of clouds working through the sky today. Those are really starting to move out of here. So we're going to see a lot of blue skies to finish out today. 51, the current temperature. Look at the dew point. 18. Bone dry out there with northerly winds at about 12 miles per hour. Still a little bit breezy, but certainly not as strong as they were earlier. 52 Comfort, 51 Bandera. Still in the 40s up there, Canyon Lake, 49 degrees there. 51 Stinson and 55 down there in Pleasanton. You're checking in at 51 in LaGrange, 53 Gonzalez, 53 Kennedy. So we're starting to see some warm up here. It's not going to be huge today. I think we'll probably make it into the mid 50s, maybe upper 50s in a few spots for highs. Then we look at the dew points. Okay, they're really dry. They stay really dry into tomorrow. We get a little bit of a bump on Wednesday. Not much. Uh, dew points jump into the 40s. That's still dry. Uh, but then they get pulled back down with another front. So there's no real opportunity here to get Gulf moisture back in place to get another rain chance. So it's going to be a, a pretty dry week. And as you look at the forecast wind speeds, they do calm. This is tomorrow morning. So with winds light, sky is clear. You know what that means. Perfect opportunity to get these temperatures way down there. And as we get into tomorrow afternoon, the winds will pick back up, by the way. Probably more of a southerly wind this time uh, with some gusts maybe up to 20 miles per hour tomorrow afternoon. So here's the forecast low temperature by tomorrow morning. Uh, generally speaking, I'd say around 30, 31, 32 here in San Antonio. You get outside of town, you're going to find some numbers in the 20s. Comfort, Bandera, and Kerrville, all those places are likely in the 20s. And then you go south, probably close to freezing Poteet, Pleasanton, Floresville. This is a night where you want to take in some of those sensitive plants. Of course, the pets, don't forget about them. Temperatures just cold, probably not cold enough to have any issues with pipes here in San Antonio. That may not be the case as you get up into the hill country with where the numbers are a little bit colder. Uh, but this would be our first freeze here in San Antonio if it does indeed verify. And uh, there you go, Fredericksburg down to 27 tomorrow morning. Visible satellite picture shows we've got a few clouds coming through. Otherwise, the whole middle part of the country is quiet. In the wake of this last storm system, which is now moving off to the east, there is a new tornado watch box, though. I should point that out. East of D.C., just south of New York, places like Philly, looking at the potential for some stronger storms today. That's a dynamic storm system. For us, clear skies. We will get another front on Wednesday. Unfortunately, again, just not enough moisture to work with, so all the showers will be out around Houston with this, and we'll probably generally miss out. There could be a couple of showers east of San Antonio early Wednesday morning. Forecast for today, up around 56, 57 for a high, and then those numbers tumble quickly tonight. 62 on your Tuesday, 64 Wednesday, 57 on Thursday, a little cooler behind that front. Some 50s on Friday, and then we rebound into the 60s this weekend. But these are some of the coolest numbers we've seen in a while. We'll be right back.
And another tradition, First Lady Melania Trump unveiling this year's Christmas decorations at the White House. The, this year's theme, America the Beautiful. More than 125 volunteers came together to make the White look festive, White House look festive. They put up 106 wreaths, 62 Christmas trees, 3,200 strands of lights, and the volunteers tied more than 17,000 wow. bows. That's a lot of bows. Yes. You know, we spent all last week talking about Thanksgiving, and Mike and Jen were showing us all these different recipes, all these different kind of foods, and you'd figure after, you know, four, five, six days of just doing nothing but eating, they'd do something other than eat, but look. They're back at it. <laughs> Of we love we're to eat. eat. Okay. Yeah. Are we doing Ain't nothing wrong with ours. <laughs> what else would you expect? You know something? And we're going to do some <laughs> great things with some of those leftovers. Yes, like. If you have any leftover pie or some rolls, that's all I have left over in my house. We're going to show you a really cool recipe. Chef Brian West is here. Yep. He's going to teach you us about that and ways to kind of cut back on some of the, the fats and the sugars and salts, right? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. It's important. Simple things to do, like what? So, for instance, like, you know, some of the, the heavier creams, we've got some yogurt over here mm -hmm. um, that's a good probiotic. Um, we're putting in some fruits and stuff like that, kind of getting a little more roughage in there and trying to eat just a little bit cleaner. Um, These can, two are very interesting. Yeah, so you can kind of trick your brain into think you're eating something sweet whenever you're using some of these warming spices like cinnamon and clove and things like that. Uh, it'll actually invoke the, the, the feeling that you're eating some sweet with it. And then the acids, same deal except for salt. So you can actually cut back salt by adding a little lemon juice, a little vinegar to something. Uh, you know, adjusting the acidity in a, in a dish is, is really a craftsmanship kind of okay. deal. Well, yeah. we've got some great recipes for you right here. And also, it's the last day it's of November time. and I'm waiting to get rid of this fuzz on here. Uh, are you excited? You can get that shaved off here. I am, yes, my wife is not <laughs> though, but, and we're gonna talk about all the money that KSAT has raised. Awesome. Yes, plus two sisters are finding an awesome way that you can gift young teenage girls uh, with a journal and boost their self-confidence. Yep, and we got some great gift ideas.